I've covered Dougal Dixon's Man After Man a number of times here on the Beware cast, with numerous individual videos talking about the different species who appear in the book, my general review of it, and of course, the full five hour audiobook video that I made a couple of years ago. I'm on record as saying that it isn't exactly my favourite speculative evolution book for a number of reasons, however, I do acknowledge its importance within the genre and the immense contribution that Dougal Dixon has made by writing it. He himself is also on record as not being all that pleased with how it turned out. This, I believe, was due to publisher meddling, which isn't exactly a rare phenomenon. I've always been baffled by the arrogance of those in the publishing industry and other places like film studios who seem to think that they can dictate what the creatives under their employ do in their own projects. I would understand it if the ideas that these people had actually improved the media that their companies were bankrolling, but more often than not, it ends up detracting from it and sometimes completely ruining it. And because of this kind of meddling by the publisher Blandford Books, an imprint of Castle, Man After Man ended up being quite different to what Dougal Dixon originally wanted to do, which was to write a story that would have involved humans time travelling 50 million years into the future to colonise the biosphere of the future he had developed for one of his other books called After Man from 1981. If this version of the book had come to pass, then that would have made Man After Man a direct sequel to After Man, but sadly that never happened. However, Dixon would eventually get to realise his original vision for the book, for the most part, in the form of his 2010 speculative biology work, Green World. Now Green World is rather elusive, as far as books go, as it was only ever published in Japan, in two volumes. Luckily, I've managed to find a couple of copies on Amazon's Japanese site, and I'll be buying Volume 1 later today, so once that has arrived, I'll make a video where we go through it page by page, like the video I made a few months back when we looked through Man After Man. And thankfully, I won't have to learn how to read Japanese when Green World arrives, as I plan to use Google, I think it's Google Lens or something like that, to translate the text so that I can actually read the book and not just look at the pictures. I'm very much looking forward to it. And now with that obnoxiously long intro out of the way, let's get into the video where I will be talking about everything that we Westerners currently know about Dougal Dixon's Green World. Now first things first, we'll talk about the setting and the general premise. The eponymous Green World, or Ascaris 2 as this little pop-up on the Green World page of Dixon's official site informs us, is an Earth-like exoplanet with a thriving biosphere. All animal analogous organisms on Green World are, according to Wikipedia, quote, descended from a radially symmetrical six-legged starfish-like animal. Animals on Green World secondarily developed bilateral symmetry, which is what is seen in most animals on Earth, developing into two major groups. Sulcosims, in which the plane of symmetry lies between the legs, meaning they have three pairs of limbs, and brachiosims, in which the plane of symmetry has led to the formation of one arm at each of its ends, meaning two pairs of limbs and two unpaired limbs, one at the front and one at the back." End quote. I actually talked a little bit about this aspect of Green World a few months ago in one of my unscripted videos, which I'll link in the description. It was actually talking about a 1997 documentary which Dixon appeared in, called The Natural History of an Alien, which I reviewed. That documentary is also available here on YouTube in its entirety, so I'll, I'll link that in the description below as well. I've also found that it was part of another programme called E.T. Please Call Earth from 1992, though I myself haven't actually seen that one yet. It was a part of the Equinox series. It then subsequently appeared in the BBC's It'll Never Work, The Radio Times, and in BBC Focus in 1993. In the spring of 2021, the fictional biosphere of Green World was highlighted among other science fiction works at the exhibition Interspecies Futures at the Centre for Book Arts in New York, USA. From Wikipedia, quote, In the book, humanity discovers Green World just as Earth finally collapses under the pressure of mankind's impact and a generation ship with 10,000 people is sent to colonise the planet. Green World then explores the first thousand years of human colonisation on the planet through following some key families of settlers. Over the course of this time span, every ecological catastrophe caused by humans on Earth is repeated on Green World. 
The book is divided into several shorter chapters, each telling a short story and featuring illustrations of the local animals and their interactions and relations to humans. Illustrations also include excerpts of advertisements, science papers, field guides and recipes. By the end of the book, Greenworld and its ecosystems are in ruins, mankind having caused a mass extinction event through their actions on the planet. So it seems Dixon still has his anti-human sensibilities, painting us as little more than a kind of virus that's going to move from one planet to another, ravaging and consuming our way through the universe. This is a viewpoint I've criticised at length before, so don't worry, I won't dwell on that too much here. The majority of the illustrations in Greenworld were done by Dixon himself, with a little bit of help from some other artists such as Julius T. Kasotonyi, I, I can't pronounce that, and Margaret Walty. I've scoured the internet and managed to find a few good illustrations from Greenworld, with some coming from Dixon's official website and others coming from elsewhere, but they all show up in Google Images. Some rather interesting stuff here. This photo shows the author himself with a model of a so-called Strider, a beast of burden used by humans on Greenworld. There is also a short three minute video on YouTube called A Glimpse of Greenworld, which I'll link below and of which I've already used some footage in this video. It uses stop motion animation, a personal favourite animation style of mine. Very cool indeed. And as far as I can tell that's really all there is to find about Greenworld at the moment, but as I said earlier, I will be ordering a copy of Greenworld Volume 1 from Amazon Japan, and when it arrives I'll have a lot more to talk about. Ok, update, in fact I have ordered it now. Including postage it only cost me about £38, which is pretty good all things considered. It's coming by global priority shipping and apparently will be arriving by the 19th of July. At the time of writing this it is the 13th of July, meaning my book will be travelling all the way from Japan, reaching England and landing on my doorstep in just six days. Yeah, I'm actually rather sceptical about that, but we'll wait and see. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I do apologise for not having uploaded very much recently. I've been hard at work on my speculative biology book, which is coming fairly soon, I don't know when exactly, but you know, before the end of the year, called The Telescope. And if you want to get a sneak peek of that, the introduction to it is now on my Patreon and it's also exclusive on YouTube as a members only video, so if you want to get a sneak peek of the telescope, become a member or a patron. Anyway, thanks for watching, please subscribe and like the video and all that stuff. Take care, bye bye. Thanks for watching the Bewarecast. If you enjoyed this video then please hit the like button, along with the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of future uploads. Also, please feel free to leave a comment on this video with your thoughts and share it around with anyone who you think would find it interesting. I'd also like to encourage you to become a patron of mine on Patreon, where, for as little as one pound, dollar or euro a month, you'll have access to exclusive bits and pieces from me, such as sneak peeks of my own upcoming speculative biology book, The Telescope, a study of alien worlds from Earth. The introduction chapter of The Telescope is available on there now, read by myself, so if you want to check it out, then just follow the link in the description. I would also like to thank my current members and patrons who could be seen here. This has been the Bewarecast, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.